Today I have the pleasure to talk with uh, Timo and Lauri from Stato Varios after their gig at the Helsinki uh, Festival first uh, edition. Uh, how do you feel guys today? Good. Yeah, great. It's a great day. Yeah. Hometown gig. It's a nice festival. I like this area. Yeah, this is fantastic for this kind of metal festival. Yeah. I think your show was very good and, and you played a few songs from the new album Survive that you've been touring uh, lately uh, and the reception of the album was very positive I, I, I gather. How do you feel, you know, is, does it feel, for many people it's like the best album of the current lineup, I don't know if you agree with this or... I, I agree with this. Yeah, yeah. For, I mean, all, all of them are great, but especially now it feels best. But... It's sort of like probably we better more attention to composing and, and more time and, and so on and of course we've been together when they both joined in 2011 yeah uh, and this is 12 yeah i think this is the longest standing lineup in the history yeah of, if you think about it yeah but yeah we took i mean it took seven years to make so we decided because maybe before like uh, with Elysium Eternal especially, we had a little bit, you know, some tour is coming, we have to finish the album quickly. So this time we were like, nah, no, we it, we finish when it's done. Yeah, it was exactly like this record label. They were asking like, well, when is the album coming out? We said, it, it comes out when it's ready. And they were like, a few years and then maybe they even gave up. Like, it's not going to happen. Right? It will happen. Yeah, and I, I could hear, I don't know if you agree, but there's some more modern influence now that I was listening to the new tracks live. There's a contrast to the classic style that there's like a lot more layers maybe in the keyboards or like in the tracks that you put behind. Are you following any any kind of, you know, I mean, not that you're following a trend, but are you paying attention to what's going on with other bands or, or the style of production, you know, not, not trying to keep it so much like the old days, but like maybe making it more modern or... I think it's it's kind of a difficult to stay loyal to your style, but then try to be a little bit more fresh. And I, I think Matthias produced the album, and, and uh, he's more into, into you know following what's going on. Maybe louder, but I'm 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 an old fart. I listen to Iron Maiden, like you have the shirt. So you know, like to me, it has to sing the melody. So, but I, I agree that, that it's like some of the songs are even a bit more aggressive in the past, but. We didn't do anything on purpose that this album has to be this way, this way, but that's how I see it. Yeah, it's not a conscious choice. Of course, like since after, like after, when Timo talked, he was producing. There was a certain time, and when Matthias started producing, there was a certain progression for it. It's not. I, w I mean, Survive doesn't have any more of that than, let's say, Elysium or Eternal. It's. It's. And also, I mean, it's. You know, 30 years go past, and and things yeah. they need to change a little bit. We cannot do the same thing over and over again. You know, it was natural. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Very natural. Yeah. I wanted to ask Timo about your voice. Um, now there's a lot of controversies about um, singers uh, relying a lot on backing tracks, a lot of, a lot of like uh, you know controversy and 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 then some lousy performances. And and how do you see that you're in your career? Like, uh, how do you feel your voice right now to sing live the old songs? And do you see you know coming to an end at some point, or are you going to do it until you? Oh uh, well. You never know, of course. Um, I think nowadays it's easier for me to sing comparing, like especially like ten years ago, when we were on a Halloween tour, and then me and some some crew guys from Halloween, we got Cambula bacteria, and that destroyed my voice for one and a half years. So now it's been coming back. Of course, it, it changes. The sound will change by the age. That happens to other two singers, but. I, I was definitely singing everything live today. I've been fucked up one song completely. So you know, no, you didn't well, up. I didn't fuck up one verse. But, but you know, it happens. It's live. I think. And, yeah, if you analyze this question, it's there's the singers like let's say Ronnie James Dio. He was just getting better and better until the end because he had a trained voice, just like Timo has a trained voice. Then maybe you were referencing to like rock singers like Vince Neil or Axl Rose, yeah, which is a very screaming voice which is taxing because it's sort of like punk rock mm. and I think these singers they have much more problems because if you have a properly trained voice it's your instrument you take care of it it should hold of course it's also it's a play of dice but but these kind of problems what some like more rock bands have that we don't have that with Timo yeah so far so good yeah, <laughs> yeah knock on wood. and it's e it's actually it's easier somehow to sing nowadays yeah next question goes a bit 
back in the back catalog, there's been some reuses, uh, reissues lately of albums that seem to be a bit random to me in the order that they have, they have come. But I don't know how much impact you have on that and and the band, you know, and the and the um, original uh, publishing label that they that they didn't come in a certain you know specific order or like uh, at a certain anniversary. So like a lot of people are waiting for visions and episode uh, on vinyl, for example. Well, uh, actually, me too. But if this is totally up to the record label. I think they were supposed to release visions like years back, and then they be they they have the schedule. We we don't decide this, is, you know. They release, and sometimes we are like, uh huh, okay, now you released it, okay. But they have the rights, so not much we can yeah, do. Yeah, there's not about much it. influence from the band to to. No, there's of course if we have some spe special things, you know, like they want to have some yeah. some demos remixed or some new songs remastered, yeah. then that's that's it. But what comes to releasing a good album, basically, they decide. Yeah, overall the band's concentration is on new music yeah. and then, you know, the labels and whatnot take care of it. Of course, when we can have an impact, but yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned also that there was a lot of years between the previous album and, and, uh, and Survive, um, but, but how do you feel right now, you know, from the, I don't know, um, kind of uh, in um, songwriting mode or are you gonna take a long break or, or like, do you, did this new album give you some inspiration to release a new one like faster than the previous time or well it, it depends on on many factors like we are not everybody living in in, in finland even full time so that that's always like complicated to see what the schedule is but i would like to keep it somehow like what we did with the survive album that we actually composed together maybe somebody has some ideas but i think that worked out but it takes longer time because in the past it was like one guy composed the music and maybe he even wrote the lyrics and then we just rehearsed the song and then we recorded. But now we tried to like get some ideas in, in and then everybody was able to do their part and you know. But that takes longer. It's like old school way of, of, of composing. But I would like to keep it that way. But hopefully we we start composing uh, at the end of this year when we, have, when we, we probably are in Finland. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. And, and because of you know how the long history of Stradivarius and all the play that people that have played in the band, there's always, you know, discussion, yeah, compared to what Halloween did, that, you know, bring the old guys back, maybe for a show, maybe for a short uh, tour. I, I remember you played with um, uh, Yark Michael a few years ago, one song. So is there, are you ever in contact with the old members of the band and, and you want to do something like that for anniversary, for a special Tuska, for example? Or? Well, first of all, we are in contact with Jörg quite a lot. We saw him last time. Where was Colombia or somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, Ecuador. Ecuador, exactly. Yeah. So that, that, that's for sure. And then also we met Mr. Tolki last... Winter? December 5th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, like a year ago. He came to see our show. I thought it was nice. But right now we we don't have any like concrete plans. I think Timo is busy with doing his, his new album, The Old Guys. And, uh, but you never know. But... Yeah, I think again we we sort of concentrate mainly on 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 doing the new things. Mm. What happened with Jörgi was he just happened to be there, so it was not announced or planned. It was like a out of that that sort of kind of thing. What you're talking is like a different thing. I I think who knows about the future, but now especially with when we're coming out with an album like this, we're feeling that that's. Uh, that's the path we want to. As, as Timo said, we want to continue, you know, uh, continuing the path uh, after survive, and, and I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So um, talking about survival, so you've done quite a lot of touring for it, and you went to South America already. But uh, that was, I mean, at least the, the the show in Chile was in a festival. So are you planning to kind of go around the world again with a headlining? Uh, uh, tour or, or what can Chilean fans expect from Stratovarius? Well, as, especially what comes to Chile, I really would like to have our own show that we could play a longer set than, you know, because last time when we played it was like fully, so many people there just watching us at Omi this fe festival, but that was great as well, but, but maybe it's, it's too early to come back next next year but maybe at the end of the next year but let's let's see yeah, yeah let's say, the, the band has very much plans and we want to come to chile as soon as possible mm -hmm. and then it's about the agent and the venues and whatever so but you know when it comes to latin america we always like to come 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you have any special memories? I think you've been quite a few times, and, and I remember that, that Stato Barrio has been really big band in Chile yeah, since yeah. the 90s, and, and you know, I think that you play, we were, one of, we, where our friends were rem remembering that it was one of the first power metal bands to come to Chile in the 90s, because like, now we take it for granted, but back in the day, you know, like, to see a metal band, international metal band in Chile was like a huge event, and Strato Varios was one of those, in, I think, for the Destiny album um, tour, maybe, so do you have any... Yeah. I, I think we actually, I, I heard from a lot of people, of course, I did, I don't know for sure, but we might have been the first like European band to tour there. I might be wrong. But that's what I heard. It was, of course, fantastic experience to do the first tour, and now everything has like developed. All the promoters and everything works so much better than in, in, in the past. So it's, it's like, and the fans are still there. So it's, it's a great, great pleasure for us to come back. So hopefully soon. As far as memories, I think 2015 Cowpolitan was one of the best shows we ever did. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. And also yeah. great to come back to this venue because exactly. for a while we were playing other. I mean, yeah. Cowpolitan. That's yeah. That's our. That's our. Yeah. That's our venue. Yeah. People you like so, that one? People yeah, yeah. So, that's a great so venue. Out there. It's like yeah. Fantastic. And yeah. yeah. The audience goes really up, and then you, you know. You do forever and they're putting light yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks like you're looking at the stars. And it's funny, even though we are using this in ears monitor, sometimes it's like the people are singing so loud that it's like, I don't hear anything. Like, oh, what, what song is it? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever thought of, you know, now the DVDs and Blu-rays, they're not so fashionable anymore, but have you thought of, you know, I don't think there's, well, there's the Farewell uh, with uh, Yard without, that you recorded, but have you re thought of recording new live album with, uh, with you know, video? We've like been that. thinking about it, but then it's always you need a local film production crew and label to pay for it. I think we it. released a bunch, like this Loud Park show is somehow released. Yeah, that, that's that, a bunch of tracks from Wacken, a bunch of tracks so from. Yeah, but that's Master what I mean, there was, there was a crew ready there. So. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, we've been re releasing live, live footage all the time. But we should do it in Chile. Yeah, I think that would be very I, great. That's what we should do. <laughs> yeah. So if you got a great, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. We should need a local production company who, who does things like that. And then yeah, we'll ask around. Okay, guys, I don't want to take more of your time. I want you to go have your uh, dinner after a great show. Thank you so much. And if you want to say something to the fans, of course. Thank you so much for supporting us all through these years. We'll be back and hopefully you'll be back. Uh, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, señoras y señores.